Welcome back to Nineworks TV. Today, we're looking at the similarities and differences between the 996.2 and 997.1 Porsche GT3. So, we'll start with the similarities between these two cars. Of course, in both being GT3s, they share the same ethos, and that's uh, less weight and increased performance over the Carrera derivatives of which these cars are based on. Both of these cars are made in Weissach and not Zuffenhausen. Both of these projects were spearheaded by the legendary Mr. Andres Preuninger, who these days uh, sits at the top of Porsche Motorsport. Both of the cars have a GT1 derived 3.6 litre capacity Metzger engine sitting in the back. And both of these cars are very similar, on paper at least, to the RS derivatives that sit slightly above them. By the time of this car's successor in the 997.2, the differences between the GT3 and the RS were stark. So they sit in a really nice sweet spot in GT3 lineage and actually price-wise, very, very similar. It's what's gonna make today's test really, really interesting. They're the top level similarities between the two cars. The differences we're really gonna drill down into. Perhaps a big change straight away between the two is when you look at the bodies. The 996 Gen 2 is the last of the narrow body GT3s. Into the 997, and really this car in comparison to the six next to it, is a lesson in better managing airflow. For example, you've got the front slit at the nose of the 997.1 GT3, which as we all know has remained ever since. This further helps with extra downforce at the front of the car. We've got a completely different front uh, bumper design, which is feeding or giving a lot more air into the rads and also to the brakes behind. Underneath the cars are completely different. It actually means the 997 has got a slightly better drag coefficient over the 996.2. I'm gonna put the um, exact stats on that on the screen below. It's a, a redesigned rear wing. Porsche has also better dealt with airflow at the back of the car, in particular reference to the M97 engine sitting in the back of the 997. That flat six now boasts a bigger throttle valve up from 77 mil to 82 mil, uh, optimized cylinder heads and a new exhaust with low back pressure. And actually again, it's become another design hallmark that started with this car, and that's the center exit dual exhaust on GT3s. Changes to the gearbox as well. The ratios from second through to sixth are shorter. There's also additional reinforcements to the gearbox. With the 997 possessing more power, Porsche has also made changes to the chassis on this car. We've got wider wheels at the back. They're up to 12 inches wide now uh, by 19 inch in diameter, up from 11 inches wide at the back by 18 inch in diameter on the 996. An uptick in brakes again for the 997. We've got 380 mil discs at the front, up from 350 on the 996. We've also got six piston calipers at the front in use for the first time. Um, a little known fact, Porsche has also made changes to the track width on the 997. It's wider at the front and at the back over the 996. It's also worth pointing out the track width on the 996 is the same front and back, whereas on the 997 it's not. Another big detail, this is the first GT3 to have an active chassis. PASM now giving you essentially two different damping modes. You've also got a sport button on the 997 for the first time, which again provides different mapping scenarios, gives you a sharper throttle response as well. You also, with the 997, have traction control for the first time. So, uh, more power, more torque, a completely revised chassis, additional technology to help you get the very best out of this car. On paper, it seems the 997 is superior to the 996 in every way. There is what appears to be one drawback though, that's the 997 is slightly heavier, weighing in at 1,395 kilos over the 1,380 of the 996. That's the differences in a nutshell between these two GT3s. Of course, we want to find out their real differences and similarities where it matters, that's in the driver's seat. Let's head out for a drive and see how we get on. Yes, there were a lot of revisions to this car over the Gen 1 GT3, but this is still the last basic GT3. No traction control, no active chassis, no sport button. The only variable is you. It does therefore require a little bit more thought to push the car. I think it's all the better for it. It's very mechanical. There's a lot of noise going on. You can really hear the limited slip differential. 
at low speeds you can hear the chattering away of the single mass flywheel there is a lot of rolling tyre noise in this car, again, where like sound deadening has been stripped out. But it's all the good stuff, it's all the good stuff that you want, and to be honest, expect from a, a GT product. Likewise, the wheel, pretty busy in my hands, as it navigates the many lumps and bumps on the roads. Um, and it will tram line as well, trying to kind of find every little divot to go into. So it can be a little bit of a handful to keep it straight. The uptick of that is the nose is extremely dialed in. Its ability to change direction quickly is pretty staggering, it has to be said. And likewise, pick up of the power once you get on the gas is remarkable. The pedal placement as well is beautiful for heel and toe. From 2000 RPM, you've got 80%, 80% torque throughout the rev range. Lovely. The weight of the steering on the 996.2 to me is just absolutely perfect. You know, I mentioned the wheels kind of pulsing and bobbing away in my hands, but it's not overbearing at all, actually. And it's just that, you know, unfiltered steering that you crave on a performance car. Maximum power in the 996.2 is achieved at 7,400 RPM. Maximum torque is at five grand. So it likes being up top. Oh, sounds great, doesn't it? I would like a little bit more noise lower down the rev range. And to be honest, that's where subsequent GT3s have really improved that recipe. Just feels so small as well. It's, you know, look, easily touch the other side of the car. It makes placing the car on the public road an absolute joy. It just feels so light as well. It feels light, it feels nimble, it feels agile. And yet there's no distillation or filter to the drive. This is pure GT3. It is more dialed in. It does require more commitment to drive. It is a bit lumpy and bumpy around town. It doesn't make a great deal of sense, but push on, eke out, do what this car is designed to do. And it is performance par excellence. Before I get too carried away, I think it's time to jump in the 997.1 and see how it compares. Right then, let's get this show on the road. Difference already, oh my God, especially with the clutch. That is so heavy. Okay, I've not even gone anywhere and I can gauge differences with clutch, gear shift, seating position a lot lower, noise as well. I've not even gone anywhere yet. And steering, okay. This is exactly why I love doing this channel. We're driving two 911s, not just 911s, but GT3s. If you don't get these cars, it's very hard to find differences and nuances between the two. But if you're into them, you just open up, I mean, a complete can of worms, really, in terms of their differences. But like the finding those differences is absolutely fascinating because I've gone 300 yards up the road and already there's an absolute book worth of differences between these cars. Introduced for the 2007 model year, so four years after the 996 Gen 2, there are roughly speaking 3,300 of these on planet Earth, so around a thousand more than the 996 Gen 2. We'll start with my observations from as soon as I got in the car. You're a lot lower. Yes, this is a comfort spec 997 GT3. It's actually quite nice and quite cool, uh, no pun intended, to have a GT3 with a sunroof. Then of course you've got the um, comfort electrically adjustable sport seats. Anyway, as I say, you definitely sit a lot lower in the 997 than you do in the 996. The clutch is super heavy compared to the 996. Um, I don't dislike it though, but I just find the 996 clutch uh, easier to engage. The shift though in the 997 is rifle bolt. It is a noticeably shorter, it kind of just snicks through the gate. It is really nice. And then, as I'm justified there with the steering, in terms of weight, it's lighter. I personally definitely prefer the weightier feel of the 996. It's a bit more feelsome as well. This just feels perhaps a little superficially light, I'd say, by comparison, whereas the 996 steering, it just feels like it's telling you everything. And 
there is a difference in terms of how it corners. Oh, the noise. Okay, so I thought I would prefer the 996 and the 996 is sensational, but clearly with this car, it corners flatter for starters. The nose also feels a lot more stable. The directional changes on this car are phenomenal. I feel like with the 996 GT3, that switch from understeer to oversteer is quite sharp. It happens quickly. With the 997, that transition is more controlled therefore more manageable perhaps. I do feel like this car is slightly easier to drive as a result. Again, directional changes in this car are sublime, but the wheel is not dancing around in the palm of my hands like it was with the 996, at all in fact. So there's a definite difference in the steering of the 997 and in the way the 997 corners over the 996. In terms of how the car is damped though, it feels very similar, if not the same. But there is more of a duality to this car, and a lot of it comes down to these buttons down here. As I mentioned earlier on in the video, the 997 is the first GT3 to have active chassis, the first GT3 to have PASM. And we're left in normal mode, as now. That damping is, according to Porsche, the same as the 996.2. Put it into sport PASM, though, you can immediately feel that. Porsche says the ride becomes a lot stiffer, and I hope you're kind of seeing, I would describe this as crashy. Sport PASM in these early cars, where the technology is so primitive, it's only suitable on race tracks. So Sport PASM is track use only, and I'm gonna turn that off. Another facet of that duality is the Sport button, sharpens the throttle response. So as a press of that button, as there, Oh, it just sharpens everything up, particularly in the upper echelons of the taco. Hard on the brakes, nose in, loads of feel through the nose, wonderfully direct. Let's hold a second. I mentioned this is the C4 wide body. It's 44 millimeters wider than the 996. The reality is still super easy to place the 997. I think where you do feel it most is in the corner and certainly with its track width. The 997 just feels more planted. There's more nannying technology on the 997.1 over the 996.2. There's traction control for the first time on the GT3. There's even a change up feature on the dashboard here to tell you when's the optimum time to change gear. Very different to the 996. There's no active chassis there, it's passive. There are no buttons to play with. There's nothing telling you when to change gear. The only parameter you have to deal with is yourself and your own mood, which I think I prefer. That just sounds so good. There's definitely a better soundtrack to the 997 as well. Just sounds more guttural. The engine is revised over the 996.2. It's still 3.6 litre in capacity. It's still that GT1 derived Metzger dry sump flat six. Slightly more power up from 381 horsepower to 415 horsepower. Again, same as its RS, generational RS equivalent. The red line has been raised by 200 RPM from 8,200 to 8,400 RPM. Compression ratio has been raised and Porsche has also changed the way this car breathes. As well as those engine changes, Porsche has also tweaked the gearbox. It's got its own oil cooler for the first time. The gearbox itself has been reinforced and the ratios from second through sixth have been changed. They've been shortened. So mechanically, there's a lot going on here. It's certainly not just chassis tweaks that separates the 996 from the 997. My feeling is the 997 engine feels a bit more toppy, really gets going after 4,000 RPM, and particularly after 6,000 RPM, the pickup is sensational. With the 996, it feels a bit torquier. There's kind of, the engine gives you more a little bit lower down. The 996 Gen 2 is definitely more raw and more focused than the 997.1. So it's a case of pick your poison, really. This is slightly, perhaps, has a few more layers to it. And as I mentioned, that 
um, duality and breadth of performance is wider. I just think, and I've said this elsewhere on the channel, for the GT product of 997 generation cars, Porsche refined the model, so it basically increased that bandwidth of what the cars are capable of. Absolutely, yes, that performance capability has been increased. The 997 is just a bit more refined, and that trend really, as we go through the generations from here, is only exacerbated even more. I mean, the 992 GT3 is an excellent example of that. So it all comes down to which model you prefer. This has been the most fascinating test for me. I want to say a massive thank you to Mr. Toby Dyer. Without the kindness of people like Toby, this video and the content I produce simply cannot go ahead. Likewise, with the 997 owner, that car was for sale at Paragon. It's actually been sold, but the owner hasn't picked that car up and has let me drive it. I don't know who that owner is, so I want to say, you know, big thanks basically because without the kindness of people like Toby and the 997 owner I wouldn't be able to make this content. Do subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, it means when I drop a video you get to see it first and I'll see you in another video very soon.